and welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube for some Jund Sacrifice. That's right, we had a um, we had a, a viewer that did a tier three donation yesterday that wanted to see some Jund Sacrifice on a stream. So that's what we got. That's what we're going to be playing here today to start off the day. We're also going to be playing some Teamer mid range with Bio Essence Hydra and then some Gruel Adventures after that. So a lot of green red decks today. And then we'll see if we try the Oko's Madness format, which is just a, a um, quick event that's available now on Arena. All right, anyway, um, we I, I tried a four-color sacrifice deck um, a few days ago, you know, maybe four or five days ago, where it had Corvold the Fake Cursed King. I really like this card, Corvold the Fake Cursed King. We had it, you know, we paired it with Oko, and, you know, we paired it with four colors, basically because of Oko. This is kind of the same type of deck, but instead of playing Oko, we're going to be playing Midnight Reaper in that slot and staying with just three colors, staying with a better mana base and everything. And, and honestly, the the deck that I was playing, I was running out of cards. And Midnight Reaper does a good job of uh, keeping your hand full. So hopefully that helps us out here. But yeah, Corvold, Fake Curse King, just a really cool card. Um, it is whenever you sacrifice any permanent as long as Corvold's on the battlefield. So that doesn't have to be just because of Corvold's trigger. You get to put a plus, plus one, plus one counter on it and draw a card. We only got to play Corvold one time. Um, um, yeah, all four passages, of course. Uh, we only got to play <clears throat> Corvold one time earlier uh, whenever we played the deck, and immediately we put five counters on the Corvold and drew five cards, and it was pretty awesome. Um, actually, honestly, maybe I don't have... You know what? I'm going to play another Swamp instead of this Castle because of that... Six, seven, yeah. I want to be able to have enough basics to be able to grab with the Fable Passage. So let's actually just play another Swamp there instead of that. Um, <laughs> you see a Corvold and you think of Hungry Hungry Hippos? <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, but yeah, besides that, uh, you know, just pretty normal sacrifice stuff. Obviously, the Cauldron Familiar, Witches Oven, Mayhem Devil, all of that good stuff. There's one Wicked Wolf in here as well that we can find with like the Once Upon a Times and everything, and against aggro decks where Wicked Wolf's really good, we got a couple more in the sideboard. <clears throat> Going with two Trail of Crumbs, this card is really cool. Um, yeah, I've been I've just been really happy with Trail of Crumbs with, with these kind of decks, um, getting us extra cards uh, and everything every time that we sacrifice a food token. Okay, well, let's, let's give it a try. We're going to play four matches over in Ranked. That's what we're going to do today, is we're going to play four matches with each of our decks in Ranked. I'm getting pretty... We're pretty close to getting back to Mythic, so we'll see if maybe we get to Mythic today if we have a good day here. The event's really not fun. That's what a lot of people have been saying, that Oko Madness event is not very fun. So we'll see. Oh, oh! Somebody here in chat said that they found it mildly fun slash interesting, but actual Momir's Madness would be better. Yeah, Momir has always been pretty fun, so hopefully. But yeah, I don't, I don't know why they made everything three threes. But I don't know, but that was their shtick. They're sticking to it. But yeah, first we got some good standard decks to play. All right, starting off with Gruul. Be a good match to start the day off with. One that I'm 
I'm not sure we're going to be able to handle all the pressure that Gruul can put on with the cards that we have in our hand. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, opponent sees the goose and thinks, here comes the Oko. But nope, no Oko over here. So there's a Gristlebrand, Gigantomancer, 8-drop Bouncer, and Agent of Treachery that all just win you the game. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. We'll kind of see. Deck hits very hard. if we meet again already down to 12 oh, I was getting bored anyway okay it's a good turn for us You know, I'm glad my opponent played a Paradise Druid, not a Questing Beast, for example. <laughs> hey, Samurai Man. Yeah, that's what I do every afternoon. But Sundays we're here on early. Got the early mat Sunday matinee stream. This isn't good. I just have to hope my opponent doesn't have any kind of pump effect. So they they do have any kind of pump effect, I'm gonna die. Another Another showing of Paradise Druid's hex proof. Being pretty devastating.
Well then. I don't want to actually shuffle my library. Sacrifices must be made from time to time. But I'll have this Fable Passage in case we draw a Corvold or Devil. All right, Ember Cleave is pretty good. I think Ember Cleave is pretty good. I think Trail of Crumbs and Midnight Reaper are a couple of cards that are a little slow. Kind of the same thing with Golgari Queen. Yeah, they're bringing in these Wicked Wolves. They're going to cut a Golgari Queen. And then... Uh... Hmm. I guess I could play Masker Girl. I don't think that's where I want to be, though. Took out some creatures. We're going to take out a Once Upon a Time also. Yeah, Lux and Life Chanter, the 6-mana 4-6. Have it been spectacular? Um, I feel like there's a better chance that. Uh, Corvold takes over the game than Wicked Wolf, even though right now we could cast Wicked Wolf where we can't cast Corvold. But, you know, like, we need to have enough power to win the game, of course, and I feel like Corvold could do that. I just need to draw one land, you know, like this next, so, you know, like this next turn I'll play Mayhem Devil without using the food here. And so then I need to draw a land... I guess I could use the food to kill a Pelt Collector, but I don't really want to. I want to be able to play Corvold this next turn. Alright, well... Keeping one landers is bad, kids. Keeping one landers is a bad idea. Unfortunately, I had my good hand with turn four Corvold on the play. Getting matched up against like their one lander that doesn't do anything. Alright, back on the draw. I want Golgari Queen less on the draw. I'm going to take one out, get the Once Upon a Time back in. Um, this was a play Masker Girl. I 
Like, do I take out Queen for Masker Girl? I'm not sure. You know, I, I have a good amount of one toughness creatures with these seven. They have some one toughness creatures with like their own Paradise Druids. They can they can go. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna play Masker Girl over Golgari Queen. <laughs> Todd's world where value is king. Hey, Subotex. These hands aren't very good. Those are two really bad draws. If I wait in Noxious Grasp the Spellbreaker, it's just going to turn the Pell Collector into being a 3-3 anyway. I was hoping to be able to trade there and have Noxious Grasp for a Questing Beast, obviously. But that didn't happen. I guess I can't wait till their turn. Because that thing gains Hexproof. Benefits playing two colors instead of three. Get to cast your spells. can be tough to beat on the draw. Girl can really hit hard. Especially when you mulligan and then you have four uncastables. So you basically, basically mold a two. But that happens. Hmm. Hey, you're welcome, Frank. Well, welcome. Glad you liked the YouTube video with Boros Knights there. More gruel. More gruel. Deck recommendation for the Oko event next week. Are you are you just talking about the Oko madness that we're that's up right now? Basically, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean. I don't understand your question, basically. Okay, yeah, there's... So the Oko Madness deck, you don't... There's no deck that you... You don't make a deck for the event. It's a pre... It's just a pre-made deck of basic lands that you play. And it's just... A, it's just a bunch of random... Randomness, basically. So yeah, you don't have to worry about making a deck for the event.
turns the Pell Collector into a 2-2. Gives me a better chance at finding something to do this next turn with the two draws. Or not. Or not. <laughs> Thanks, Mugstar. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sometimes... Sometimes it doesn't work out. Alright, so it looks like they're Gruel Oko. Playing the version that splashes a blue... For Oko. I think I want to sacrifice a witch's oven. If I sacrifice Corval, does it... No, it doesn't work. You don't get to draw a card. Yeah, those are the two options. Swamp or Oven. So it looks like they have Ember Cleave. I can't, can't really beat Embercleave. Puts me down to two. Card's pretty fair. Moment of my life. Quite right. That's not... Darn it. <laughs> that was bad tapping. Uh, I, I need to leave the swamp on tap, not the mountain. Ugh. So if I would have If I would have tapped that correctly and left the swamp untapped, then I could have played Calder Familiar, go to three, and I don't have to or well Well basically I could have I could have double blocked the pel Um I guess it I guess it doesn't make a huge difference. Like I I take one less damage, and it doesn't make a huge difference. Overall. 
That's fine. All right, if I actually attack, I do five damage, put them down to 11. And debating whether or not I need to hold back for a haste creature. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they, they play just a ton of haste creatures. Can I kill them next turn if I attack, though? If I attack, they go to five. Let's see, so they go to 11, and then end step, it's 10. And then untap, that's nine, six. No, I'm not really killing them. Six, seven, eight. I get a ninth in there. I can put them down to one. Put them down to one next turn. I, I should probably just hold back. I think I had 15 damage between attacking for 5 and then next turn, I think. I might have might have been off on the count there, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, it's just Sunday. Just Sundays, just do a, a early matinee stream on Sundays. So go 1 to 8 instead of 3 to 10. Ah, could have been the extra point of damage. Oh, it's not often I'm outmaneuvered. And shattered. So I'm basically at ten life right now. So if they had if, like they'd have to have questing beast land to be able to go questing beast plus equip. That was a possibility, though, that could kill me. Yeah, okay, came back. Got that win. Corvold was just amazing, of course. Yeah, Corvold is really important there. Yeah, Dress. Five cards and, um, you know, let us take 10 trample damage, let us only take one damage. <laughs> Everybody's saying, like, the Oko band, like, or. Everybody just saying like it's a definite thing. In eight days. I don't know. Yeah, I think the 
We'll see a lot more Cavalier at Thorns, that's for sure. I want this one. Ugh. All right, good start for our opponent. So why use once a t once upon a time when you already have your turn one play? Because you have to play this first to make it cost zero. Otherwise, it's going to cost two mana. So playing it first while it costs zero. This is a hand. Pretty good hand. Bringing back Cauldron Familiar, then having Cauldron Familiar block the Pell Collector doesn't work anymore because now the Pell Collector has Trample. So even if I bring this back, go to three, play Wicked Wolf and don't fight, and chump block Questing Beast with Wicked Wolf and chump block Pell Collector with Cauldron Familiar, I still take three because this thing has Trample now. There's nothing that I have in my deck that can help me survive. Uh, I guess if I would have drawn a Noxious Grasp that, to kill the Questing Beast, I would have gone down to and then Chump Block with the Cauldron Familiar. Or even just sack the food. I guess, yeah, I guess Noxious Grasp. Never mind, there was one card. Yeah, going 1, 2, 3, 4 on the play, that's really tough to beat. That's all. That's just what Gruel is, though. Like that Gruel deck. It's just this is my opening hand. Just throw it down on the battlefield. Does it? Does it beat what you're trying to do? You don't have to think too much playing the deck, and games don't take very long. And it's and you know, like that's um, those are both qualities that people value. Not too much to do with the deck. But the sheer rate on the cards is is very, very high. Do I want Paradise Druid? All right, do I want Paradise Druid?
I'm gonna go with the yes. It's win condition for our deck. Like win condi like ever like creature all the creatures and planeswalkers are all win conditions. Things that can do damage. Planeswalkers just grind out opponents. There's very few cards in our deck that aren't win conditions. So basically everything. Hey, Dr. K. So it looks like my opponent kept a really bad hand. A lot worse than turn one Pelt Collector, turn two Kral Harpooner. I mean, didn't our opponent keep a one lander in game one? Or is that, was that the last opponent that we played with Gruul? It's Mulligan. Whoa, oh yeah, it's Sunday. It's level up Sunday. All right, so we got 40 gems from some mythic. We got a Throne of Eldrain pack and we got two Mastery Tree Orbs. That's awesome. All right, let's crack our pack. Um, I don't know why the camera's so dark. I could try. It's. I mean, it's. It's just too much light coming in through the window. So I guess I have to sit way over here. Try to sit in front of the window. It's afternoon stream. Yeah, it's. It's the lighting. Embercleave. That's a great pack. Usually I just get gems, so awesome. Get a mythic I didn't have. All right, Mastery Tree. Looks like we're over here on green. Ooh, we're going to get the Lovestruck Beast. We're going to play that one later with the Gruul Adventure. Awesome, now our next one's gonna be the Great Henge. And then we'll move through red. And work our way towards Embercleave, and then white will be where we finish up with. Poor Worthy Knight. All right, we're one and one. No, I'm not playing four color sacrifice. This is Junt. It would say four color if we were playing four color.
Ooh, we get Trail of Crumbs. Hopefully we're playing against a slow deck for our opponent. So we got we got a lot of our top end cards here, but I'm not gonna mulligan the three land Paradise Druid opener. <laughs> Mono red splash Oko. All right, that's a good draw to go along with the Trail of Crumbs. Now we need like a Cauldron Familiar. I'm playing the Trail and the Oven. I don't want to tap the Paradise Druid before Wicked Wolf next turn. I could have just played Vraska try to and kill Goose. Also, but I like getting these things out here. And not again, not extending with the, the par not showing the Paradise Druid yet. In case there was an Oko, I'd be able to queen the Oko. So if I play Corvold, we can make Corvold a 5-5 five, five, and then and really even a 6-6 six, six with the Witch's Oven. But they make a food here. They could have a Wicked Wolf kill my Corvold. I don't want Wicked Wolf to kill my Corvold. By waiting a turn, now I can go, especially drawing the Fable Passage, I can go Corvold. I can Fable Passage to sacrifice, draw a card. Uh, we draw a card with its trigger. We can take up on Golgari Queen to draw a card. So yeah, I like my play against against Wicked Wolf. Yeah, so I, I really like how I played this against Wicked Wolf, just all of these turns. Okay. That doesn't really matter if Corvold gets elked. We're gonna have so many cards. And it's still gonna have a whole bunch of counters. Alright, so I can either pay the one for Trailer Crumbs to put something into my hand or cast the Gilded Goose. I think I want to cast the Gilded Goose to be able to block. Which means. Which means I'm not getting the Trailer Crumbs value for this turn. But I think that's acceptable. This food looks a lot more delicious than this food, so we're sacrificing this food. Gonna be a good card for next turn. Yeah, yep, you always have to eat the best one last for sure. Tarting Paradise Druid. Draw a card. Can I kill my opponent from 20? Probably not. 
Probably not. But maybe. All right. I guess we could. <laughs> hey, Frisky Biscuits. Hey, Aguanaba. <laughs> One damage. Can't take that. Gonna concede. But no, I, I really like how I played that whole game against Wicked Wolf. Never exposing the Paradise Druid, etc. Corvold's awesome. That's the best kill from 20 I've ever seen. <laughs> Thanks, Penthouse. Glad you're enjoying watching this instead of the Oko Championship. Uh, yeah, bring in Lily against the slow control decks. Alright, so I want the other two Noxious Grasp. I don't know what I don't want, though, if that makes sense. I don't think I take out Trail of Crumbs. I'll take out Wicked Wolf and a Once Upon a Time. All right, so we're going to go create some food tokens and go sacrifice those food tokens. All right, I'll see you back here in a bit. Yeah, I don't know. There's there's no there's no special art for Masker Girl. I don't know why they didn't they haven't made one. I don't know. So Blue White Control had a 41% win rate over 45 matches against the food decks. Ugh. Not a good showing. Check one bite, and all your cares are gone. All right, well, turn two, Oko, turn three, Wicked Wolf on the play. GG. No Noxious Grasp for me. I would have had turn three, Corvold. That's too slow, though, being on the draw. Yeah, not not surprised there. Just Guy Fires going 42% over 70 matches. I don't, yeah, I'm not surprised there at all. I thought blue eye control was going to do better though. It 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 had better results at like the Grand Prix last weekend and stuff. It's showing better win rates against food decks there, but it's not poisoned. Trust me. Really good players know how to beat control decks though, for the most part. They usually have a higher win percentage. Also, Hey, Pedro. Golgari Adventure was 45% with 97 matches. So not only were the food decks, you know, 60 some percent, they're also just beating all the other decks. I invite you to change your ways.
Well, that was a good once upon a time because it just put a whole bunch of bad cards down at the bottom of the library. So that's good. But I need one of my four Noxious Grass for three Golgari Queens to try to deal with this Oko. Enchanting. I protect that hey, do you want to play fun and interesting creatures? That. Too Harness bad. Too bad. All right, again, not a great spot to play Corvold into Oko. We would just draw one card. It's not really worth it. They didn't activate their Goose at end step. Um, really feels like they have Vela Summer. And for how they played it there, and, and that's the case. I'm not really sure how I'm beating Vela Summer. I mean, I don't really know how I'm beating these, all this other stuff either, but. That I could have drawn three? You know, Midnight Reaper doesn't do anything, right? Yeah, these cards don't do anything. I think a little merriment is in order. There's the veil somewhere they're saying they had. Okay. So that's gonna be Alright, so we're gonna be back on the on the play here. That should help, and hopefully they don't have turn two Oko. Also, and that would that would help as well. I'm going to play one Masker Girl over a Trail of Crumbs. I 
All right, good. We have Noxious Grass for turn two, Oko, this time. And... Hmm. Golgari Queens as well. Um, I mean, Corvold would be nice to have, but I think I need, I need more mana before I could do anything with that. I'm just going to take this forest here. There's some good cards putting down to the bottom, though, unfortunately. All right, time to get that thing out of here. Should slow them down quite a bit. Who's more foolish? The fool or the fool who rules them? Oh dear. So they looks like they would have had turn two Oko. Definitely hoping no wolf here. Okay, that's good. Right. <laughs> if Oko gets banned, we're going to see a huge rise in Simic Flash and Esper Stacks. Oh man, that's not true. Esper Stacks is very easy to beat. If you want to, if you want to beat Esper Stacks, it's not. It's not a very good deck. It's definitely not a very good best deck in the format. It's not a it's not a deck that can handle people actually playing hate cards for it and building decks to try to beat it. Cause that's what I'm that's what I mean there. It's not a deck that can handle that. Don't dwell on what's about to happen. Yep, Junt has red. There we go. Got a little bit of red. Like Veil of Summer is not wouldn't leave the format. Veil of Summer is a card that really shuts down Simic Flash, and also it's pretty easy to like to go underneath Simic Flash with aggro decks and stuff too. Oko is not holding back Simic Flash. I don't I don't think I really want to go down to four mana. You know, like if I play Corvold here, I sacrifice a land. I think I can wait a turn and, you know, maybe play this Mayhem Devil and Once Upon a Time and kind of expand my resources a little bit before making another decision. I will protect the virtue of this world. So Vraska is destroy target non-land permanent with CMC3 or less. So Vraska cannot minus and destroy an island. Mm. Oh, good hit. And 
Don't let it go to your head. Huh. I guess I should Noxious Grasp Nissa. So what happens? If I play Corvold, I sack a land, do one to the island. I Fable Passage, do one to the island. I Golgari Queen, tick up, do one to the island. And then I can attack Nissa for three. But Nissa's still alive, and then a big crisis could follow. So I think we have to try to prevent a, a large crisis. By playing the grasp on the Nissa there. And of course now I kinda wish I would have you know, if I if I knew I was drawing a, a noxious grasp, I wish I would have taken one of the three drops, like another mayhem devil. Or a Midnight Reaper instead of the Fable Passage. So I we are all regret that. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Not good. Not good. Pity we couldn't have been allies. Wait, what? I I accidentally hit the skip the turn. I thought I I thought I did like the hold control and then I wanted to stop hold control and I just I just instinctively hit like skip the turn. I guess. I don't know. Or maybe I maybe I meant to hit Oh, did I I just hit the wrong two buttons. I tried to hit control shift and I hit shift enter and it skipped the turn. Uh I guess that that's the thing, is I I try to hit control shift and I hit shift enter. They're right next to each other. All right, hoping to draw Masker Girl, I guess. Well, I mean, honestly, obviously we just need to draw. Not obviously, but honestly, honestly, we need to draw Noxious Grasp. We need something to take out Nissa. There we go. I cannot protect you anymore. Okay, we got a game again. Cauldron doesn't generate food. Never mind, we don't have a game anymore. Behold, nature's true power. Corpse 
this will make a nice season. As long as we win, nothing else matters. If only I didn't take the Fabled Passage off of that Once Upon a Time, if I would have taken one of the two three drops, Midnight Reaper or Mayhem Devil, my life would have been better. Especially taking the Mayhem Devil. I just, I didn't know I was going to be drawing a Noxious Grass the next turn. Arena just frozen. There we go. Those the land shall conquer you. Lost. They just can't see it. Hmm. Surely you must be famished. Should have grabbed one of those three drop creatures. We drew a whole bunch of cards after that. We drew. We did draw the second Noxious Grass, which was clutch to kill a Nissa, but unfortunately there was another Nissa. And then just a bunch of lands and mana creatures after that. All right, we're one and two. We're gonna play one more. What do I think about Grixis Fires? Um, I, I don't... I don't think Grixis Fires is very good. I don't think it has a good sweeper. Um, which, is a, which is a real big problem. Um, it's pretty easy to attack. Trying to beat like Veil of Summer is really tough. Yeah, I'm not not in love with the deck. From a competitive standpoint. But now that being said, it's it still has a whole lot of power. And yes, absolutely. It can be a fun deck to play if you enjoy you know if that's something that you want to play, like I, mean, I think it's I think it's pretty similar to Jeskai Fires. I don't I don't think that necessarily the Jeskai Fires is that much better. I think they're they're pretty similar type decks. You get to do some really fun powerful stuff with it, that's for sure. My opponent started with the Overgrown Tomb and I was like, "Whoa, are we we're we playing against an opponent who's not playing green. And then now they now overgrown tomb up next. Or they after they start with the watery grave. 
Like, okay, never mind. I don't have a great I don't have a great recommendation on any fires deck like I don't, I don't think that any fires deck is really tier one but um, but that doesn't mean they, they can't do some some crazy stuff and and be fun to play and things like that Midnight Reaper is going to be a really good pickup here for us to be able to draw a good amount of cards to try to hit more land drops and cast more spells and everything like that. Rex, why'd you why'd you type why'd you time out fists? I didn't see what it said, but Okay, yeah, I didn't see the comment, but yeah, just do just do like a one second timeout if it's a if it's a harsh, insulting comment. Just don't don't do a ten minute. This is a is a long time member of the chat and everything. Um, I could so I could sacrifice a cauldron familiar now, and. And then you know, try to draw a land, try to hit a land drop. We would have hit the land drop. Fabled Passage, of course, is the perfect land drop. Um, I think we want to kill the murderous rider. Can I? Yeah, I can. At least sack it, create a food. I mean, I could go after the Wicked Wolf. I could sack something else, make a food to make the Wicked Wolf indestructible. I'll go after Wicked Wolf. Hey, what's up, Rad? Saying this stream is magic. Thank you so much there, Rad. That's our first of the day. I should have reset Arena before this match.
All right, Wicked Wolf's out of here. That's good. How is blocking with Mayhem Devil bad? They play their own Mayhem Devil? My life total is not anything to worry about. I'll just let this happen. So if I would have blocked, I would have drawn another card, because then the Mayhem Devil would have died before. Um, before the other creature. Before the Midnight Reaper. And that's also, yeah, that's also true. I could have popped Fable Passage and dealt one damage to my Mayhem Devil. It's a good call there. And draw an extra card with Midnight Reaper there as well. I really should have reset Arena. I'm at 23 minutes. Is this lag? So I'm just only taking up a look. Uh, yeah, I'm a full minute behind. Great card for our opponent. Getting rid of Witch's Oven. I want oh, it's not often I'm outmaneuvered. It's kind of a waste of a noxious grasp. Couldn't have been allies. 
Would love to draw a Corvold. Love to draw a Corvold. We haven't seen one yet. It'll be game winning if we find one. Hey, Storm, you're back after consuming some food tokens. Welcome back. All right, not bad. Yeah, I started playing, I kind of started playing a whole lot of Magic and competitively and stuff during World Wake. And so that's what I say for the question of when I started. I played a little bit when I was younger also, so it wasn't like my, wasn't like my introduction to Magic. But that's when I started playing Magic online and playing Magic a lot it was World Wake. tale about me is absolute nonsense and absolutely true well, that's not great for me I invite you to change your way I drew their game breaker with Oko before I drew my game breaker with Corvold started with revised fourth edition nice your first entity you purchase was starter fallen kingdoms that's good as well. So I do think it's worth keeping Liliana alive. I have to block with everything. Unfortunately. But I think we should I think we need to draw two cards next turn for where we're at. Masker Girl has Menace. We have to double block. Which, for some reason, you can't click your creatures first for the Menace creatures. There's some bug with that. Tell you, you bought for the Selesnia pre-constructed deck that had Temple Garden and Thrag Tusk and made a sweet Selesnia list. Awesome. I really wish I would have restarted Arena. I may just have to restart now. This is painfully slow.
I may just have to alt F4. Everyone is expendable except me. Um, So I'm kind of guessing they're going to be ticking up on my witch's oven since they didn't just tick up on their food token. That would be my assumption. Let's broaden your existence. Oh, that really hurts. I don't I don't think I mean Corvold's awesome, but I don't think Corvold beats Oko, Trail of Crumbs, Gilda Goose. I don't know. Now this looks bad. Oh no. Oh, I <laughs> I sacrificed the Fable Passage to the Corvold Trigger. I wanted to sacrifice Fable Passage to shuffle. Ugh. This lag is killing me. Literally. Literally killing me. You're playing with a Jace discard deck. I'm always afraid of discarding my Jace before I can do anything else. Any tips? I guess, um, A Jace discard deck? I'm always afraid of discarding your Jace before you can do anything. So I need all these lands. Its loss will serve us. But I also want to draw a card. I mean, draw two cards, really. I'm going to get rid of the the Golden Goose. I'm going to get rid of my one of my favorite cards, the Trail of Crumbs. I also I want the Blocker with the Familiar. Um, playing with Jay's discard deck, but I wasn't afraid. Like, like it's self discard. I guess I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what your Jay's discard deck looks like. Um, but maybe you can have ways to shuffle your your graveyard into your library, something like clear the mind. If you're worried about that. 
What? Okay. I guess. I'm certain you're like, why would they just steal witches on them? Me. It's not even valuable. Oh dear. Well, I think we're going to win this now. Drawing our other two witches' ovens and a noxious grasp. Come on, let me do something. There it goes. I want the fair. For now. I lagged out and reset the graphic settings, which... I want to kill their thing that, that allows them to keep making food so they can't make any more food for the Trail of Crumbs. Those blind to tyranny are lost. They just can't see it. And I don't mind using the Noxious Grouse because I had the backup Golgari Queen. Be able to, to be able to destroy another Oko, even if they had another one. <laughs> Surely you see the humor here. But I may be able to be may be able to kill my opponent here. They're down to seven. That's a good draw for them. Uh, I guess they don't really have the mana to do anything with that. <laughs> yeah, the Troll Knight deck does take a whole lot of rares. Yeah, but that, that is a pretty sweet deck. You know, those cards are a lot cheaper in paper than they are on Arena. Sometimes you get helped out by Arena. You know, you don't have to worry about spending all the money that Oko is. You just need a Mythic Wild card. But then other times it hurts out when you want to make a, a Clackbridge Troll deck. Should normally be a lot cheaper. They have four blockers. I don't think I can. Yeah, I don't think I can just like use Golgari Queen to kill a blocker. Nah. That is a pretty good line. Less than 15 minutes left. This is game one.
So I'll draw four cards here with two Midnight Reapers. Clear up the battlefield a little bit. Just digging for Mayhem Devil. I'm gonna definitely alt F4 between between games here. Yeah, this is Corvold, the Elk Cursed King. This is crazy. I'm down to 18 cards in library. Uh, this is even working. I'm multi fouring now. It's just not even working. Yeah, I could have sac yeah, I could have sacrificed Corvold and drawn one extra card there and taken the extra damage. Honestly, I don't I don't really feel like taking the extra damage. My life total is a little low, so I don't mind not having that that extra card. I mean, I'm at 18 cards in library right now anyway. Oh, really? I was waiting. I clicked resolve all on this. It was waiting for me during that. Gross. Have I even seen Mayhem Devil yet? We saw two Mayhem Devils earlier. Never mind. Um, whatever, my turn. Where's Mayhem Devil? This will finish it off. Everyone is expendable. All right, so I got eleven minutes to for these last two games here. Can I can I not sideboard? It's just not even letting me sideboard. Wait, there we go. Hmm. Everything must go. I'm not sure about the Wicked Wolves. And maybe not the Trailer Crumbs. Paradise Druids? No, I want Paradise Druid. Tell that a wind started blowing.
<laughs> hey, Bice Cream. All right, well, they have turn two Oko, I die, but, you know, this can this can handle a, a later Oko. This is actually rad to watch. This is basically what I've been doing and winning a lot of games. New to MTG, so it's nice to know the random strat I came up with is legit. Yeah, it is. Yeah, this is definitely a legit strat. Glad, glad you've been doing well with it. I mean, it's not the worst thing ever if they just have turn two Oko. So I can just kind of concede and move on with my life. Uh, by move on with my life, I mean move on to game three where... Um, where I have more time then for a third game. It's going to make them basically have no cards left in hand. No, they did have Oko. I will invert the world to watch kings grovel. Oh dear. It seems fortune favors you. Ah, oh, I thought they were going to attack Vraska. I'm just going to let them have it. Everything must go. As long as we win, nothing else matters. I don't know if I want to get rid of the goose or the cat, honestly. Certainly considering just getting rid of the goose. I'm, I'm playing this Legion's End. Usually you do cat, but like the goose? All right, we'll just do the cat. I don't know, that's, that's close. Good thing I did the sorcery or instant speed. Now. Step aside or be crushed. All right, so now this Frasco will kill the Rotting Regisaur. Um, and then I'll just play Corvold here. Being ruthless has its rewards. I'll do it correctly this time. I won't sacrifice the Fable Passage.
day is yours. Yeah, Fabled Passage is expensive. Yeah, I mean, Fabled Passage goes in just tons of decks. Um, so I, I don't think that, like, people would say that they need they can't ban Oko because they won't be able to sell packs. I don't really believe that. There's a, a lot of other good Throne of Eldraine cards that are, like, the set's still valuable. And also Oko, it's not like if Oko's banned in standard, it's it's not like it goes down to being, a, you know, a $0 okay. card. Like, it's okay. still going to be an expensive card that's well, uh, that the people... It's sought after for older formats as well. Hey, Joe, it's going good. Looks like we're going to come back and win this game. Yeah. Looks like we're going to win that game. That was pretty awesome. I really like how I played that second game there. Uh, diamond tier two with one. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, what is this? What is, don't they usually, isn't it usually like a bar that's like a, a, a U shape and you like go from one end to the other, not just like the one in the middle. <laughs> Anybody ever see this? I have, I have this. This is my progress right here. Oh, that happens anytime you disconnect? Okay. Okay, that's a visual bug that's happened. Next time it's normal. Okay. So that's what it is over there. That's what we started today with. That's where we're at right now. Makes sense. We went two and two. All right, so there's John Sacrifice. Uh, like I said, we're playing four matches in ranked. Um, sometimes we do five. I'd like to do five, but I mean, this is all like those four matches took almost two hours. It's just a very slow format, and so that's why we were only playing four matches um, with each deck. Um, but this is definitely a good option, too. Um, the Midnight Reapers were amazing. I really liked Midnight Reaper. Um, I felt like I could have had some more removal for Oko and Nyssa in the 75. I have the Noxious Grasp here. I... Like Angras Rampage, I I kind of put in the um, the Wicked Wolves, like some more Wicked Wolves in the sideboard. But honestly, I think I'd pro I think I would go back to having Ang Angras Rampage. I think we're okay against creatures, especially with having the Masker Girls. I think that's one change I would make. Um, basically, two cards, or honestly, maybe Murderous Rider instead of Rampage. Rampage just Rampage is just really good against turn two Oko. Kind of the same with Noxious Grasp. And it can also take out Nissa and stuff later. The th the reason why maybe Rider is because Rider is a permanent, so you can reveal Rider off of Trail of Crumbs. I think I'd probably go with the Rampage though, because getting rid of Oko on turn two is really necessary. So I think that just having only the four Noxious Grasps as Planeswalker's removal, I think that was the downfall of uh, some of my losses. I didn't have enough removal for Nissa and Oko. Um, so you know, put in a couple more there. Bump that up from four to six. That should help out there. I think we're already going to be just fine against the creature decks with the Legion's Ends and Masker Girls and things like that as well. Um, thanks, Block. Um, also, having the An Angrass Rampage could help against Ember Cleave. You want to put that in against like the Gruul decks where you can make them sacrifice an artifact. Um, so that could help out there too. So I think that's, that's one change that could really help uh, both of those losses that we had. All right, that's Joan's Sacrifice. Pretty cool deck here. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit the like button and leave some comments. Hope you do both of those. I would appreciate it. But thank you so much for watching some John Sacrifice, and I'll see you for the next video.